Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning and happy Tuesday. It is a great day. It Terrific is. Terrific Tuesday. Thanks for joining us this morning. Hope you're having a great week so far. And we have good news on yeah, this Tuesday morning. Great news. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Especially for people on the north side. So we're going to have some new ramps that are scheduled to open up this weekend. We're talking about the ramps on Loop 1604 and Highway 281, that interchange opening over the weekend. And this is very exciting because they've been working on it since 2017 was the first okay. segment. Well, that's one reason why it's exciting. <laughs> and it will alleviate a lot of traffic. True. That's what... Uh, a news release from TxDOT is releasing this morning. They say the opening of the new flyover ramps marks a major milestone of the US 281 expansion project. Well, the thing is, and I, I hate to bring this back up, but mm -hmm. I, we had an interview with the, um, the assistant city manager when the pandemic first really hit San Antonio. And we talked about construction, whether it was apartments or on the roadways. Right. And he's like, look, this is a perfect time for us. Mm -hmm. And it was almost mm -hmm. like a silver lining because there were no vehicles at that time to get in the way of this construction. That is true. And there were really no more excuses. <laughs> no more excuses. So there you go. We have our ramps now. Uh, that expansion project was meant to reduce congestion along an eight mile stretch of the highway there at 281 between Loop 1604 and Borgefeld Drive. The project will also provide two general purpose lanes and one high occupancy vehicle lane for ride sharing. And I don't live in this area, but I do, you know, drive by there and I know it can be pretty tough, so this yes. is definitely good news. This weekend? Yes. This weekend. It's scheduled for this weekend. Scheduled. It's set tentatively. Yes. Let's take a look at the rundown. New details in the officer-involved shooting that sent the White House into lockdown. The suspect was reportedly shot once in the chest. Public health officials warned about opening schools in states with COVID-19 hotspots. More than 800 students in Georgia's Cherokee County are in quarantine due to possible coronavirus exposure. This, one week after in-person learning began. The Trump administration is now promising to get $400 supplemental unemployment checks to millions of Americans within the next two weeks after the president took executive action. But some governors say their states cannot afford to pitch in as the president is requiring. New outrage over the video outside a Florida classroom. The incident, recorded in 2018, was allegedly part of a scare straight attempt. But now the arrest is the subject of a looming lawsuit. An investigation is underway into this deadly gas explosion that destroyed three homes in Baltimore. At least one person was killed, seven people were injured. Authorities say there were no complaints about gas odors in the area before the explosion and no leaks were immediately found. Les Wexner, the former owner of Victoria's Secret, has agreed to provide written testimony in a lawsuit involving Jeffrey Epstein accuser. President Trump says he'll deliver his convention speech either from the White House or at the Gettysburg battlefield in Pennsylvania. Critics claim using either site may violate ethics rules. As a way to make voting in this upcoming November election safer and more convenient, one county commissioner has an interesting proposal. He's proposing a 24-7 early voting location as well as possible mega voting sites. More people are losing their hair. Doctors say it's all because we're so stressed out. They call it shock hair loss when you shed large amounts of hair after a stressful event. Many people don't know what to do if they come face to face with a bear. So the National Park Service has posted a public service announcement with some helpful but humorous tips. They suggest keeping calm, moving slowly, and not running. You hear that? All right, a lot of things to take away from that. <laughs> First off, the, <laughs> what was it, the stress-induced hair loss? Yes. You looked right at me. Well, not because I think you're losing your hair, because we've been, we've been talking about this for the past couple of days. Do you think I'm too stressed? I don't think you're stressed. I don't okay. think you have anything to worry about. A lot of, kind of negative about. connotation this no, morning. No, you're, you're good. All no right, worries. I'm good. All right, it's 81 degrees out. Let's take a live look outside. <laughs> Max, you got a great head of hair. I don't know. For even now, now right I'm a little now. concerned. Right, <laughs> You're fine. And his routine, let me tell you, <laughs> got it locked down. <laughs> well, today we saw a huge drop in the aquifer, unfortunately. The aquifer is down more than a foot over the past 24 hours, and we're seeing the 10 day average rise from some rain we got last week, but the aquifer is dropping, and that's the biggest drop we've seen 
in a while. Good news is though, as far as pollen count is concerned, mold is low. It's only at 450. So that is some good news in the forecast. I want to show you current temperatures out there. It's warm start to the day. 81 degrees at the airport in San Antonio, 82 in New Braunfels, 81 down at Stinson, 80 in Divide and 80 in Hondo. So a lot of us working from home. Here's a look at your work from home forecast for the day. Temperatures are going to be climbing to 100 degrees in the afternoon. What's new? There'll be plenty of sunshine. No chance for rain today, but at least we'll have a breeze. South southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Now, while the weather here in San Antonio is quiet, it was a totally different story for the Midwest yesterday. They had a derecho move through. I'll recap that event and, of course, have a look ahead for us here in San Antonio in a few minutes. Max, Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. I like your working from home graphic. Very appropriate. And taking a look outside with Transguide this morning, things looking pretty okay on the roads right now. There's I-10 and Hildebrand. Top stories we are following today. Universal City Police are investigating after a 17-year-old boy was shot in the head at a motel early this morning. The victim pronounced dead on the scene. Right now, we are still waiting to learn his name. Officers are responding to this shooting around 4.30 this morning. This is the Super 8 Motel. This is the 200 block of Palisades Drive, not too far from Loop 1604. Police say they have four people in custody who are being questioned. Two of them are minors, but at last check, no charges have been filed. And San Antonio police asking for your help tracking down a driver who hit and killed a man and then just kept driving. It happened exactly one month ago near South Florida Street and Division Avenue. Police tell us 21 year old Antonio Lopez III was killed while trying to cross the street. Investigators believe the person responsible drives a four door sedan with dark tinted windows. If you have any information that can help police in this case, you are asked to call Crime Stoppers. That number 210 224 stop. That's 7867. If your information helps catch who's responsible, you can receive up to $5,000 cash. And four San Antonio City Councilwomen have teamed up with some local businesses to distribute free safety supplies to micro businesses and nonprofits. This giveaway happening this afternoon at the West San Antonio Chamber of Commerce. The distribution will benefit businesses in City Council Districts 4, 5, 6, and 7. Each kit has hand sanitizers, masks, and a touchless thermometer. The distribution is happening from 4.30 this afternoon to 6.30 in the evening. If you have a business and would like to register to receive the safety kit, we have a link on our website at kset.com. And as schools in and around our area start back up, a lot of questions looming. A reminder that this afternoon we are hosting a back to school town hall focusing on how to learn during this pandemic. Our guest speakers include district superintendents and mayors of the excuse me, members of the Mayor's School Task Force are going to be answering your questions and we're going to have a live chat going where viewers can chime in. And this is all happening starting at 6.30 p.m. and it's going to be live on air and online. And if you want an early jump, you can submit your questions right now. Just head to the back to school section on KSAT.com. All right, time now is 9.06 and in your morning headlines, Russia claims to have a coronavirus vaccine and police make an arrest at a pro-police rally. An SUV goes flying off the highway and a sneaky little seagull. David Sears joining us live here. A lot to talk about. You know what they say about the early bird getting the worm? This early seagull gets the ah. chips. Mm, maybe, maybe a better rhyme, but we're working on it. <laughs> <laughs> Got to start somewhere. Let's start in Russia. According to Russia, they have registered the first COVID-19 vaccine in the world and how to prove that it's credible and effective. Russian President Vladimir Putin has given the vaccine to his daughter. He said she had a slight fever at first, but now she is feeling better. Putin says the vaccine went through the necessary steps to assure its effectiveness. However, those steps have included cutting corners and the safety of the vaccine has not been verified outside of Russia and no scientific data has been released. That's according to CNN. And their phase three trial is still going on. Healthcare workers and teachers will be the first to receive the vaccine. Their health minister says the vaccine will provide immunity from the coronavirus for up to two years. A pro police rally turned violent over the weekend, and then three people got arrested. The rally for police also brought out some anti police counter protesters. This happening in Fort Collins, Colorado. Things got really ugly when one of the anti cop protesters sprayed an Air Force veteran who was in a wheelchair with pepper spray. That started a fight that ended up in that ditch right there. A lot of punches being thrown. You can even hear one of the guys yell out for everybody to keep your hands off your weapons. 
So it could have really turned bad just before police got there. When they arrived, they were able to break things up. Let's continue to have conversation. That is where progress is going to take place. Because no matter what side you're on on any issue, acts of violence doesn't further your cause or make our community any safer. Once again, three people arrested, police asking for community's help to identify the other guys involved. And of course, a lot of guys scattered and ran when the police showed up. And pay attention up here, yes, that is an SUV flying right through the bushes, hit a pickup truck and then hit that parked car and rolled over. Believe it or not, four people in the vehicle, all injured, none killed though. There was a man, wife, brother-in-law and two month old. The woman was driving. She told her mother-in-law it all started when she was hit by another car. That's it, her flying. And one of the men suffered a broken neck, punctured lung. The driver blew out her knee. The two-month-old had just a few bruises on his face, but is expected to be okay. The big concern is for Samantha Rivera's brother-in-law. I thought that they was going to lose it. I thought I was going to see my son today. And I'm still praying because I don't know how he's doing. He might be crippled for the rest of his life. Folks from the neighborhood and two guys in that pickup that was hit helped all the victims to safety until the fire department was able to get there. New York State Police are investigating. And finally, check out this little sneaky guy right here. Apparently, he forgot his wallet, <laughs> but he was still pretty hungry. <laughs> Sneaks into his home. shop, lifts a bag of chips off the rack, and then takes off. The locals call him Steven the Seagull. Apparently, this is not unusual. Does this quite often? Oh if my They've goodness. got him named, but I, I love the fact that he kind of sneaks in, yes. gets the chips in, and there he goes. And then Boom. he takes yeah. off. Catch me if you can. That's not condoning this, but it's but still I, it looks very calculated. Yeah. Not but like my uh, my Gordo. Well, do, my dog, <laughs> uh, not sneaky at all. Like this seagull, he's just kind of like. Like just well right there. Do you think it's the same seagull every day, or do you I think, think it's no? I think it's the same dude every uh, day. Yeah, Steven. Yeah, I think he's. he's I think he's, sneaky, he yeah. sits up at night and plans these things. <laughs> he sits up at night. <laughs> Maybe a different kind of chips tomorrow. Pulls we'll off see. the caper in the day. There you go. Raisin too. Yeah, you know, he's fast. But yeah. but still cute. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> Thank you, David. David. <laughs> Time now, 9, 10, 81 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA at nine, a hundred and three year old Michigan woman proving it's never too late to cross things off your bucket list. Why she decided to get a tattoo that's coming up in today's take a look at this. And we all have masks, a new study shedding light on which ones work best when it comes to protection. A look at which ones work and which ones don't later in the newscast. And how do you teach your kids to shop responsibly? The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is offering some tips to help families discuss ways to spend money wisely. We're going to have those tips in this week's Money is Personal. And taking a look at the markets, Dow up about 270 points this morning. Big gains yesterday. We'll see if we can keep it up throughout the day. And welcome back. It is 914. Over the past three weeks, our Money It's Personal Back to School mini series has covered how to talk to your kids about money earning, saving, and planning. And this week, Ivan Herrera brings us the final story in this mini series discussing ways that you can have conversations with your children about shopping responsibly. Anne is four, and her big sister Diana is 11. They're learning how to shop responsibly with the help of their dad, Andrew. The Consumer Financial Protection Bureau is offering families like theirs some tips to help them discuss ways to spend money wisely. Andrew can show little Anne the different types of bills and coins that exist so that she can learn about the currency she will one day use to pay for items. Andrew can also use a phrase like, there are lots of things that are of value, and some of them cost money. Anne's dad can give her examples about the free things in life, like spending time with family members. And he can talk to her about things that cost money, like school clothes or gas. Anne can also learn about the choices one has when they're out shopping. Andrew can use real world examples to help her understand this concept, like explaining the family budget or why he picks one item at the grocery store over the other. Now, since Diana's a little older, Andrew can discuss cost-saving 
shopping with her and also warn her about some of the hurdles she may encounter along the way. Andrew can talk with Diana about advertising and how it can get people to spend more money than they anticipated. Andrew can use a phrase like, it's a good habit to shop around and compare prices before you buy. This can help Diana understand how to shop wisely. Diana can also learn about how to use coupons or discount codes. Andrew can point out the savings he gets in the real world or while shopping online to help her understand. Andrew can also use store receipts to help Diana understand the concept of sales taxes and how to plan for them. For this week's Money It's Personal, I'm Ivan Herrera, KSAT 12 News. And we have a link to those tips on our website right now. Just visit ksat.com slash MIP. And if you have any money questions, you can submit them by emailing Ivan at the email at the bottom of your screen. A lot of stuff going on, a lot of back to school. Yes, a lot of people getting ready. So you, you got to save money for that too. If exactly. you, if you want to buy, you know, like the school shoes that you want mm -hmm. or the backpack that you want. Yeah, it's true. But a big part of going back to the school, it's in the middle of August and we are seeing triple degrees. Right there, we're gonna throw it right to our favorite but, Sarah Spivey. I was gonna hey. say, that being said, maybe it's a, I don't wanna say it's a good thing, but I mean, they will be learning virtually Absolutely. initially so they can stay in the cold. Stay in the air conditioning, mm -hmm. right? Uh, yeah, I love this. It kind of feels like a weekend. Even <laughs> yeah. Tuesday, <laughs> morning. Being here with Max and Stephanie. Uh, we have saw a pretty nice sunrise this morning. There were plenty of clouds out there this morning, but we did see the sun peeking through those clouds later on, and you'll see those rays of sunlight here shortly. There they are, 81 degrees outside right now. Guess what? We have already got a heat index value. It feels like it's 86. That's because humidity is high. At least we have a breeze from the south at about 15 miles per hour. So the breezy conditions will continue all day. And if you find some shade, it shouldn't feel that bad outside with that breeze. Showing you the satellite right now, these morning clouds, which we typically get this time of year, are starting to break up. You can see that very clearly here. And into the afternoon, we should be able to see more sun than clouds. 80 right now in Hondo, 80 in Yavis. Valley 83 in Del Rio, 82 in New Braunfels, 83 in Gonzales, and 83 in Pleasanton. So we're just about all in the 80s, and in the afternoon, we'll just about all be near 100 degrees. We've got this humidity to contend with today. Dew points are in the 70s. Because humidity is going to stay high throughout the day, we expect a heat index value well past 100. Now, on the future cast, once again, a couple of pop up showers along the coast may try to make a run uh, for areas like Gonzales, Hallettsville, Carn City. But here in San Antonio, we'll stay dry today. No chance for rain around the Alamo City, unfortunately. Thankfully, we did get a good amount of rain uh, last week on Monday, but we could use any little bit of rain, and we're not just not going to see much today. 100 for the high in New Braunfels in San Antonio, 100 in Gonzales, 101 in Hondo, 104 for the high out toward Del Rio, so it's going to be very hot uh, closer to the Edwards Plateau. Uh, 86 Round 10 will still be mostly cloudy, but then notice how into the afternoon we will be able to see a little bit of sunshine, a little bit more sunshine than we're seeing right now, which is nice. And, and although we'll be at 100, expect a heat index value in the afternoon closer to 104. South southeast winds at 5 to 15, and once the sun sets, it should be pretty nice. Temperatures falling into the 80s by about... 10. Now, today is a CPS Energy Peak Energy Demand Day. We're going to try to lower our use uh, from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Ways that you can do that up the thermostat by a couple of degrees. Uh, and just a reminder that it's going to be the power grid is going to be stressed today. And so that's why we have those CPS Energy Days. Now, it's fairly quiet across the United States at the moment. But earlier I was talking about the derecho that happened across the Midwest. Now, a derecho is a long lasting thunderstorm that produces quite a bit of wind damage. And this was yesterday from about 8 o'clock in the morning all the way to midnight. So for more than 15 hours, the Midwest was dealing with these thunderstorms. And this thunderstorm damage lasted more than 300, 600 miles, rather. And there were over 490 reports of wind damage with up to 100 mile per hour wind gusts in Iowa. That is very impressive. We're going to have video of that in the next half hour of GM. MSA. But while one part of the nation is dealing with the uh, the effects from that derecho, we're going to be seeing a heat high in place. And so that's why temperatures all throughout the next seven days are going to be at 100 degrees or above. Look at that. Very little chance for rain, although 
It is starting to look like on Monday we could see isolated showers and storms, so we're keeping our fingers crossed for that. Hopefully that'll bring some relief to some folks, but other than that, it's dry as a bone, guys. All right, I hope so. I'm looking forward to Monday. Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. Nice cool down to 99. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> Anything will help. Time now, 920, 81 degrees out. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. It was an act of vandalism or an act of gravity. Mm. Plus, a 103-year-old woman gets her very first tattoo. Those stories and more coming up next in today's Take a Look at This. Good morning, welcome back and happy Tuesday. A mysterious accident leaving a Nebraska man with a severely damaged truck and questions about a mysterious giant spool that seemed to be at fault. CNN's Jeremy Roth has today's Take a Look at This. A mystery involving a giant spool unraveled in Omaha, Nebraska. Yeah, a hit and run spool, really. While leaving work, Jeff Smith discovered his truck had been smashed. Right next to it was the apparent culprit, a 1,500 pound wooden spool. Creased the hood and cracked it. It hit so hard. The spool had been seen in the parking lot above, but was it an act of vandalism or just an act of gravity? Local utility companies denied ownership of the spool and later on, the plot thickened. An unidentified man was caught on camera removing the spool from the scene. While police investigate, Smith is left dealing with questions and seven grand in damages. A group of Massachusetts friends out for a boat ride got an unforgettable look at a humpback whale. It was amazing. The group was boating off the coast of Manchester by the sea when the great mammal appeared before them just a quarter mile from the shore. They stuck with it for about a half hour and their patience finally paid off. Oh, yes! They said seeing the massive creature breach was shocking and left them full of joy. Their day on the water was now a whale of a tail. Really lucky and grateful to see nature at its best. And finally, a 103-year-old Michigan woman is proving it's never too late. After being discharged from a long quarantine in a nursing home, Dorothy Pollock decided it was time to tackle her bucket list. Item one was a tattoo of a frog. Item two was a ride on a hog. Go get them, Dorothy. Or take a look at this. I'm Jeremy Roth. Good for her. Yeah, it's a great birthday. Good for her. 103 <laughs> and thriving. I think so. At least she's having a lot of fun. Time now, 926, 81 degrees out. A lot more ahead on GMSA, including a young boy from North Carolina just took his very first steps in over two years. You don't want to miss his inspiring story that's now going viral. And they come in in so many styles, so many colors, but which masks are the most efficient in protecting you against this pandemic? Researchers at Duke University tested 14 different kinds of masks. We're going to explain the results next. And as we head to break, let's go ahead and take a look outside with TransGuy. Things looking pretty okay on the roads there at 1604 and here at Loop 410 and Jackson Keller. We'll be right back. And welcome back. It is 929. A new study shedding light on which masks work best when it comes to stopping the spread of the coronavirus. Researchers say some of the face coverings people are wearing don't work at all to actually prevent the spread. CNN's Brian Todd explains. They come in so many different styles, materials, and designs, from N95 surgical masks to bandanas, knitted masks, even so-called gaiters, those stretchy bands of fabric that cover the neck. A new study from researchers at Duke University has advice on which masks work and which don't. Gaiters, or fleece masks, they say, you should stay away from. It's a combination, certainly, of stretchiness of the material and the material potentially being very thin. The bandana, according to the researchers, may look cool, but doesn't work well. The material itself, that is just made a little bit more transparent, a little bit more trans, uh, transmissive to these droplets. In addition, there's, of course, lots of gaps. The Duke researchers tested 14 different kinds of masks. They shined iridescent light from a laser through slits in a dark box. A person spoke one phrase repeatedly into the box to create droplets. Stay healthy, people. Stay healthy, people. They used a cell phone camera to record the droplets, then counted the droplets that were let through by the different masks. The ones that work well, they say, N95 surgical masks are the best, letting out very few, if any, droplets. But those should be reserved for frontline healthcare workers. Those standard surgical masks, the light blue ones that many of us can buy at stores, also work well, they say. And all the cotton masks we've tested they work great. The Duke researchers say there's one kind of mask that they believe does more harm than good, 
the fleece mask because of the size of droplets it lets through. What's noticeable here is that you see lots of particles and lots of little particles. So this is actually counterproductive because the little particles that get generated from big particles, they tend to hang around longer in the air. They can get carried away easier in the air. The Duke researchers told CNN their studies not meant as an endorsement of certain masks. Other experts are hopeful that this kind of advice can be communicated more clearly to the public, acknowledging there's been way too much confusion. We should not have any confusion over mask wearing. This is confusion that we ourselves, uh, the frontline workers, the government, public health experts, doctors, nurses and other influential people when it comes to infection prevention control have actually created because we haven't got on the same page on what works and what doesn't work and what works based on evidence. And that was CNN's Brian Todd reporting. Experts also say there now needs to be more information available about how to correctly put on and take off a mask and how to clean and store them because there are specific techniques involved in that as well. All right, let's take a live look out at the Alamo City. 81 degrees to start your Tuesday morning. Not too bad. Not the triple digits yet. Oh, well, not yet, <laughs> but it's going to get hot today as it has the last several days. The aquifer is down about uh, more than a foot over the past 24 hours. Uh, and so that's the biggest drop we've seen in a while now. As far as the pollen count goes, it looks okay. Mold is low at 450, uh, so that's some good news there. Like Stephanie was saying, this is about the coolest it'll be all day, so let's take a look at some of those temperatures out there. And even then, it's still very muggy. 81 in San Antonio at the airport, 82 Port Asse, 84 in Castroville, 82 in New Braunfels, 77 still in Bernie, but guess what? We're going to be melting today, so how about that melting forecast? Mostly cloudy uh, right now, but we'll be partly cloudy by the afternoon. 100 degrees with a heat index closer to 104. Southeast winds at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Hey, we have video of that destructive derecho that moved through the Midwest. We'll have that and, of course, your forecast coming up. Thank you, Sarah. We look forward to that. Taking a look outside with Transguide, things still looking okay. They're at 35 and Evans Road. If there are any problems, we will let you know. All right, have you ever driven by a house and you're like, oh, wow, I didn't realize how big a house that was until you drive by and you're like, wow, it goes back so far. Look right. at that huge yard. Like if you go around the corner right. for, for a corner house. We're right. about to talk about the opposite of that. Yeah, so this is very interesting. This skinny house is going viral because <laughs> of how skinny that house is. So look at that angle right there. It looks like you can only stand up in that <laughs> house. But yes, these are called skinny houses and it has a very narrow width. Okay, so just on one end though, let let me clarify one end, not all the ends. It's just three feet. But throughout the house, as you can see through these pictures via Zillow, it's not that big of a house even with the three feet. We actually did have to measure out three feet just to see how wide it was. I don't know how you're getting through there. Exactly, but you know, but that's only that one one part. Uh, there, I, I think maybe it's a picture, nice house. All yeah, in all. I was gonna say there's a picture actually of a of a real bed. <laughs> it's coming up right there on the bottom. So. I like that you had to stipulate a real bed. A real one, like a, right? Not a doll size or one for, right. one for your I, I for your dog you said or something. If the whole house was three feet, you would need like a little coffin. Exactly, we would have to sleep like like vampires. But uh, <laughs> so this Steph this home right here though it's sold in Deerfield Illinois mm -hmm. so that's where you can find it if you you really want to take the a question is, real look at it would you live in it you know it's pretty yeah it is it's a it's a nice looking clean house on the inside and out <laughs> <laughs> that's a really nice way to say it. I love the graphic house body shape because it's a exactly. skinny house exactly well you know what and just like I was gonna say well like a book I guess it doesn't matter what's on the outside it's all the, on the inside. You are right? ultimate mom zone this morning. It's perfect. I should mention <laughs> it's 1,600 square feet. Yes. And someone who lives in about a 500 square foot apartment, I will take the extra 1,100. Exactly. Not, not, a bad, not a bad deal there. No. Time now, <laughs> 935, 81 degrees out. You're watching GMSA at 9. And it's a video that's gone viral and for a good reason. After the break, the story of a young North Carolina boy who was able to walk for the first time in two and a half years. Good morning, welcome back and happy Tuesday. An NC State super fan with health challenges taking his first two steps in nearly two and a half years into the arms of his best friend, who was a former mascot for his favorite team. Now millions of people have watched those epic steps on social media. Bridget Condon with WTVD in Durham, North Carolina has a boy's inspiring story. Come on. 
wrong? The video that's gone viral, viewed 10 million times. I was so overwhelmed. I didn't even know what to do. Like, what does a normal, uh, this is a normal mom who just posted a video about her kid. What are, I mean, what, there are no rules to this. <laughs> like, it's just crazy. Grayson walking by himself for the first time in two and a half years into the arms of his best friend, a former Miss Wolf. Most of the first few times he just fell straight to the ground, but then he took those steps and we could not have been happier. <laughs> Grayson does anything and everything that he wants to, so it was just kind of the getting the confidence and finally figuring it out that, you know, it was something that we could do, so it, it was definitely an emotional moment. Grayson was born medically fragile and delayed in walking. Then he got sick in 2018 and had to have orthopedic surgery, and due to some complications, he didn't recover as quickly as doctors hoped. He really has that never give up spirit. He is a fighter. When the odds are stacked against him, he always pulls through. But I also feel like that's because he has all of the support. And I think that's how sometimes him and I get through the hard days. We always joke about it. Grayson's a celebrity. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> It doesn't matter where we go or who we see. Grayson's going to make friends and everybody knows him. And so it only makes sense that his big achievements go viral. Good job! He's just our normal kiddo, but people like to have something that gives them some hope that the world isn't the dumpster fire that it feels like right now. And if we can provide some sunshine to people, that's the least we can do. Good job, Grayson! It's great to see Grayson walking, and that was WTVD's Bridget Condon reporting from North Carolina. A GoFundMe campaign to help out Grayson and his family has raised nearly $16,000 towards a $50,000 goal. It's so cool to see. Yeah. But yeah, NC State fan. Good for him. <laughs> yeah, what a good story this morning to start our day. Uh, and it's been a beautiful start around San Antonio. But before the break, I did sh promise that I would show you some video from that devastating uh, storms that moved through parts of Iowa and Illinois. This is in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, of the wind. You can just see how strong that wind was from a derecho. A derecho is a very long-lived thunderstorm that produces wind damage in Cedar Rapids uh, winds were very high and in other parts of Iowa we had wind gusts of up to 100 miles per hour in some places so very devastating storms there this uh, duration particularly lasted over 600 miles so very impressive now here in San Antonio we had a beautiful sunrise and a beautiful sunset. This is last night's sunset out at Woodlawn Lake facing downtown. This is the time of year where we look forward to the sunsets because the heat goes away with the end of the day. And you can see downtown San Antonio there off in the distance, a beautiful picture. This one sent in through our KSAC Connect feature on our weather app. You can show your weather pictures and we like to show them on air. So thank you very much, Taylor, for sending in that picture. Right now outside, we are seeing those clouds that have broken up and we're seeing plenty of sunshine through that. You can actually see these clouds moving if you look carefully enough uh, and it's breezy out there. We've got winds from the south at about 15 miles per hour. It's 81 degrees. Humidity is in the uh, mid 70s right now and so we are looking at a heat index value already in the upper 80s. It's 81 in Comfort, 79 in Kerrville, still in the 70s in parts of the Hill Country. It's 73 in Lost Maples, but it's 82 at Port SA, 86 already in Pleasanton, 86 in Divine, 82 in New Braunfels, and 81 in Canyon Lake. Elsewhere, we've got 85 in Gonzales, 83 in Del Rio, and 82 in Carrizo Springs. This is the humidity that I was talking about. Dew points are in the 70s, and so that is at the top of our scale. This is bad hair day humidity. This is, you walk outside and it feels like a wall of water humidity and in the afternoon we're still going to see high humidity and so this is a look at forecast heat index values in the afternoon could be as hot as 106 in Pleasanton could feel as hot as 106 in Catula around San Antonio we should see a heat index value close to 104 in the afternoon and unfortunately rain is not going to happen around San Antonio today but there is the potential for a few isolated showers uh, to make their way up to that I-10 corridor out toward the east. So areas like Gonzalez, Hallettsville could get an isolated shower storm. But the rest of us, 
Going to be toasty with no rain chances. 101 for the high in New Braunfels, 101 in Seguin, 103 at Lake Hills, 101 in Castroville, and right around 100 degrees around downtown San Antonio. Again, partly cloudy skies in the afternoon, and that heat index will be close to 104. South southeast winds will be breezy at times, which is nice at about 15 miles per hour, potentially gusting up to 20 miles per hour. And just a reminder that today is a CPS Energy Peak Energy Demand Day. We are going to try to lower our use between 3 p.m to 7 p.m. And the way you can do that is up the thermometer a couple of degrees, but also minimize appliance usage. Don't do your laundry in the afternoon, essentially. Turn off lights in an empty room, close windows, blinds, and shades to allow for uh, it to stay nice and cool without having to tax the power grid. Now around the national weather pattern, it's been quiet here in Texas, but again, out toward the Midwest. This is a look at those uh, wind reports over 490 damaging wind reports in the last 24 hours from places from Iowa out to Illinois uh, and uh, Indiana. Meanwhile, heat high in place. It's kind of broken up right now, and so the DFW area could see a little bit of rain. But here in San Antonio, we're going to be hot not only today, but in the foreseeable future. Temperatures should be in the triple digits, so you're going to want to definitely stay cool. Thankfully, it does look like we could see a few isolated showers and storms on Monday of this upcoming week, but as you know, 20% still pretty wimpy as far as rain chances are concerned, but it's something. You're something saying there's a chance. <laughs> yeah, and we will take it. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. 946, 81 degrees out. And we take a look at today's 9 at 9 next. Good morning, welcome back and happy Tuesday. The future of sports very uncertain right now, like a lot of things because of this pandemic, especially the future of college football. Plus, while the world is focused on the coronavirus pandemic, an environmental disaster has been slowly unfolding in the Indian Ocean. Here's today's 9 at 9. According to Johns Hopkins University, there are now more than 20 million coronavirus cases around the world and get this, almost 750,000 deaths. The rise is driven in large part by Latin America and the Caribbean and Asia, where cases are starting to grow again. The American Academy of Pediatrics reveals COVID-19 cases in kids jumped by nearly 180,000 in less than a month. Those numbers are a reminder that kids are not immune from this disease. They do get infected. Presidents and chancellors from the Big Ten and the Pac-12 are expected to meet today with their respective conferences, and they're expected to vote on whether to cancel the 2020 college football season, potentially even try to play in the spring. University Hospital and UT Health San Antonio have announced the start of a third phase of a clinical trial involving the drug remdesivir. It's hoped that it boosts the immune system so that it knocks the virus down more. Minutes into a press briefing, the president abruptly escorted from the podium, the White House placed on lockdown after shots were fired across the street near Lafayette Square. President Trump returned moments later to address the incident. There was a shooting Outside of the White House, it seems that the person was was shot by Secret Service. Today, a federal appeals court in Washington, D.C. is expected to rehear the case of President Donald Trump's former national security advisor, Michael Flynn. This could resume the challenge to Justice Department's controversial decision to drop its prosecution of Flynn. President Donald Trump wants to tighten entry at the U.S. border with Mexico because of this pandemic. A source familiar with the matter says options are being considered right now that include barring entry to U.S. citizens and legal permanent residents. Mauritius is seeking international help to contain an environmental disaster. Last month, a Japanese tanker ran aground southeast of the island and now it's breaking apart and leaking thousands of tons of fuel into the sea. TikTok is reportedly planning to file a lawsuit against the Trump administration. This potential lawsuit comes after the president signed an executive order that would block all U.S. transactions with TikTok's Chinese parent corporation by September unless they find an American buyer. And a big reminder, this afternoon we are hosting a back-to-school town hall focusing on learning during this pandemic. Our guest speakers include district superintendents and members of the mayor's school task force. They'll be answering your questions and we're going to have a live chat going where viewers can chime in. 
and it is all starting at 630 this evening live on air and online. You can submit questions right now. Just head to the back to school section on KSAT.com. And coming up tomorrow on GMSA at 9, you can do science with pretty much anything, and that's especially true for Katie's Science Lab. This week, Katie is trying out balloon experiments mm. with candy. Well, that sounds good. To follow along, you will need soda and bottles, candy, such as Pop Rocks and Nerds, my favorite, balloons, and a funnel. So just join us for some science fun tomorrow at 9. All right, let's take a live look at it. the roadways. We were with Marcus Trujillo, Officer Marcus Trujillo, this morning. Everything was smooth sailing. Looks like everything's still out there. No chance of rain. No, that's the sad part. No <laughs> chance Aww. for rain. Nice Bitmoji. But the Bitmoji's happy. I put uh, my Bitmoji inside of a watermelon because that's the only way to stay cool right now. We need to stay cool out there. 102 for the high on Thursday, and we'll be in the triple digits all week long. As you said, Max, uh, no chance for rain. So let's go ahead and look at uh, the rest of the forecast. Well, it looks like I got a glitch in my graphics, so just trust me. It's going to be dry. It's going to be hot. <laughs> I trust you, Sarah. Thank you. I Always. think you need a bib. <laughs> yeah, I do. It, it, I do. <laughs> in that watermelon. <laughs> And you heard his voice. We are joined here live, David hey. Sears. To How talk spurs. Two, two left. Two, that's it. Mm. Two left. And maybe more. It just depends. Spurs taking on the Houston Rockets this afternoon. Tip off for that one is uh, at one o'clock. Another one of those weird start times because of the pandemic and what they're doing out there in Orlando. The Spurs win out. They have a chance at the playoffs. If they lose, that pretty much ends the chance at the at the playoffs. So they could. Uh, they could uh, win today and then win on Thursday, and they got to have some help, though. So here's what you do. You go to our website, kset.com, and RJ Marquez has an article on there, and he's got all the scenarios because there's, like, a lot of different scenarios mm -hmm. that they need. But they got to win out if they're going to have a chance at the, at the postseason. So we'll uh, have a wrap-up for you. What are your tomorrow. biggest takeaways from this bubble in terms of team play, individual players, stuff like the that? The young kids have gotten a lot of great experience, and the Spurs are in pretty good shape as the future goes i think they need a big guy in the middle mm. to help them you out. don't think Jakob's the answer uh they need somebody behind Jakob. okay i have so, a question david yes, i've um, got an answer so the Spurs, <laughs> an answer. if they make it to the playoffs this uh -huh. will be what year in a row 23 23 wow. and that, they'll, they'll be the first team to do that right that's history Okay. Wow. Well, that, I, that's why it's important. To it'd be see nice if they can to put there. that under our belt. Mm. Yes, yeah. even more yeah. so. Go so. Spurs, go. There <laughs> are people born in this town who have n known the Spurs to never been out of the playoffs. I know. Think about that. It's impressive. If you're if you were born 22 years ago, you spent every year of your life in the playoffs as a Spurs Incredible. fan. Yeah, in San Antonio, awesome. that's there the way go. it is. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Aw, take so a look at this. Story. A forever flight. A Southwest flight attendant accompanying an El Paso pup 2,000 miles to his forever home. So what happened, there is a, a group of puppies who are on the side of the road. Someone's car broke down, Loretta Hyde. Uh, no, actually, it was another woman, but a car broke down, and so she was trying to get these puppies rescued. Somebody in North Carolina saw them, so they were trying to get the puppy from El Paso to North Carolina, and this flight attendant right there volunteered to take the puppy to a new home. Aw, so cute. What a journey. I know. And a cute pup, by the way. That's true. You guys have a great day. A fly dog.